Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. This is Bloomberg Business Week with Carol Masser and Tim Stenevec on Bloomberg Radio. You're saying that someone called Beetlejuice. Don't say his name. If you say his name three times, he will appear. I know this is a big step for you, but in the words of Dr. Glickman, I'm going to give you the push you need. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Is that Beetlejuice? (laughs) Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Carol. Wait. (laughs) It turns out saying it three times isn't all that bad, though, guys. Relax. Okay, here's why. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, a sequel to the 1988 spooky comedy hit movie, brought in $111 million in ticket sales in its domestic opening over last weekend. Our team reported this on Monday. It drew in younger filmmakers, or film goers, I should say, as well as those nostalgic about the original picture. 36 years ago. Amazing. The Warner Brothers Discovery film exceeded the company's expectations. It had forecast 90 million in box office receipts going into the weekend. So uh, delighted to have with us Al Goff. He's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice screenwriter. He's joining us from Los Angeles. Also with us here in studio is our own uh, Mark Lydorf. He reviewed the movie. uh, So we just want to kind of have a round table. First of all, Al, thank you, thank you, thank you so much uh, for joining us. 1988, I had to think back kind of where I was. Uh, The first Beetlejuice movie, 36 years. Why did it take so long or why are we now getting a sequel after 36 years? Well, I I can't answer why it took so long, but um, about three years ago, um, Tim approached us on the set of season one of Wednesday. Tim Burton. Tim Burton. Okay, thank you. And, and, sorry, and... uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and asked us um, to write the sequel. He had been he had been thinking about it for a long time. He'd been having conversations with Michael Keaton and Winona Ryder, and he said it's the movie that he's asked most about, and people have been begging for a sequel for years. And he, I think he was ready to, to do it. We met with him. We kind of went through all of his ideas, what he wanted in the movie, and we went off and wrote an outline and pitched it to him. He really liked it. We wrote the script. I mean, Miles Miller, my my writing partner, and I have been partners for 30 years, and this is probably the the smoothest and fastest movie we've ever had from, from you know, <laughs> from would you, would you guys write the script to three years later, here we are, the, the movie's out in theaters. So, you know, it's, it's been a, an incredible, thrilling experience for us. No, you and Miles, this is Mark Leidorf, uh, who I had the pleasure of seeing the movie in Mexico City. I wanted to see this movie so bad. I asked them if I could review it on vacation. (laughs) And um, I'll tell you, the kids in this industry screening were all in their 20s. And I know you're, you and I are about the same age, I think. But uh, so I thought, assumed you'd be writing it for, for my generation, kids who loved it in the 80s. And the, the folks in Mexico just ate it up and they were all a lot younger than me. So congratulations. <laughs> uh, you, Thank you. You, you and, uh, and Mr. Miller are no strangers to success. Of course, you also uh, created Wednesday, which I think I read is the most viewed Netflix series in English. Is that correct? It's the, that is correct. That's kind of incredible. It, 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 by the way, it is incredible. We, we can't believe it ourselves. So. But that also was a Tim Burton project. And, and my first question for you would be, what, what is it like writing for an auteur like that? Mm. Someone with such a specific aesthetic and kind of quirky sensibility. Is it harder or is it easier? Well, the two things. What's interesting is we had written the, the first episode, the pilot episode of Wednesday, and we sent it to Tim. And because he was our first choice to direct it. Which, by the way, is like is like shooting a, a satellite into space and hoping you know you you get an answer, right? <laughs> so, um, and because you know he'd never done TV, we didn't know. But uh, you know, uh, you know, my first jobs were all in sales, and if you don't ask, the answer is no. So we sent it to Tim, and literally four days later, we got a a text from his agent saying Tim read the script, he loved it, he wants to to FaceTime with you guys, and so it, again, it's one of those like dream scenarios for us. And we FaceTime with Tim. He said he, he loved the script. He, he'd always, he'd circled the Adams family, you know, several times in his career, um, but never had found a way in. And, and he, he, he loved it. He, Wednesday was his favorite character 
in the Adams family. He said he would have dated her in high school. And, um, <laughs> and, and then, yeah, which, by the way, felt very on brand. I was going to say, and, it's not surprising um, to hear that. <laughs> it doesn't surprise and, me. <laughs> and so that's, that's really how it, how it started. But I, I think when you, when you look at Tim's movies, what's, in, what's really incredible is the majority of them are family dramas with his unique perspective on the world, which is so incredibly unique and specific, but somehow is incredibly universal. And that is something I think he is singular in a, as a filmmaker in that respect. So, so I think, I think for us, it was, you know, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice to us is really the most joyful movie you'll see this year about death and grief. Well, can I just say from someone, you guys all know, my, our audience knows, I'm from a large family, one of seven kids. I mean, every family yeah. has its love, its quirkiness, its stresses. You know, Tim, you're from, you know, you've got a bunch of siblings got, too. Yeah, three and, siblings, like, we kind all of know, all over. Like we can relate yeah, to this, right? <laughs> yeah. We can relate to this. Um, I'm uh, curious about what Tim Burton's role is as you guys are the screenwriters. W- where does he get involved and where do you kind of, where do, where do you where are you involved? And now we have about a minute, and then we'll come back and do some more conversation. Sure. Well, the the the, the quick answer with this one because it's so personal. He he gave us his ideas. We came back. We broke the story. We wrote the script, and then we spent a year, you know, going through drafts. And I think what Tim does is there, it's like a tuning fork. He could read something. There might be a section of a of a script where he's like something isn't feeling right here. You know, I think let's focus on this area. He'd have some ideas. So it, it was incredibly collaborative that way with him. So and I think because we've gone through and done Wednesday with him, we could we could speak Burton a little more fluently. <laughs> so it, it helped a lot. Burtonese coming to a language exactly. learning app near you. Um, listen, we got to do a little bit of news and we're going to come back and talk sure. some more because I am curious about, you know, the first call, was it also to Michael Keaton or second call to Michael Keaton? Like, would you do this with us? So don't answer. We're going to come back. Okay. We're going to continue with Al Goff, screenwriter at Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, joining us from L.A. And, of course, with us in studio is our own Bloomberg Business Week reviewer of films, Mark Lidoff. We've got lots more conversations to come. You are listening and watching Bloomberg Business Week on this Friday. Carol Messer along with Tim Stenebeck. We'll come back in just a moment. All right, everybody, we want to get right to it. Al Goff, still with us, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice screenwriter, joining us from Los Angeles, and also here in studio, Bloomberg Business Week film reviewer, Mark Lidorf. Uh, and of course, I'm here with Carol, Ma- I'm, I'm Carol Messer. You are, today you are. <laughs> Friday the 13th, we you never know. Said, it's Friday thir- the 13th, like crazy things happen. Just Godecophobia, there we have it. Hey, Al, so Mike, um, Michael Keaton, I'm just curious what yes. that phone call was like. Was he in from the get-go? Did he say, yep, sure, yes, no, what, like, what happened? We know it's, it's Tim was talking to Michael. So when we wrote the script, it, we were like, we really have an audience of two. It's Tim and Michael. Mm-hmm. So I think once we had the script and we'd gone through a couple rounds with Tim and he, he had a draft he felt really good about, he sent it to Michael. And So you guys wrote you it know, before Mike, even Michael was on board? Yes, Yes. Tim, like I said, Tim had been having conversations yeah. with him, but he hadn't read the script and he could have said no. And, you know, he he was, you know, very complimentary of, of, of the script and, you know, really liked it. And, you know, we got a lovely email from him. So we were like, it, you know, there's three emotions in show business, depression, surprise and relief. And we were relieved. <laughs> so, yeah, we were we were relieved. Well, <laughs> well speaking of Michael Keaton, I, I wondered watching the film. You know, he seems to be improvising a lot. I suspect he's not. And I just wonder if there is room with an actor like that, a character like that, if there is room for improvisation and how you write around that. I, the answer is there, there is room for improvisation. We wrote it in, because the character he created with Tim in the first movie, which, by the way, we went back and read the Beetlejuice shooting script, and that character... In, in terms of there's a Beetlejuice in it, obviously, but that voice was really something that Michael and Tim mm. and, you know, created on set, the whole look and the thing. So the good news is it was, he's such a classic specific character is we were able to write to that voice. And we always treated Beetlejuice as an agent of chaos, which right. is what he is in the movie. So if, and, and the thing that, that we were all cognizant of, 
Michael probably the most was you don't want him in too much of the movie. A little Beetlejuice can go a long way. Mm. You don't want it to, you know, so, it, and I think because of that, when he's on screen, he's that much more impactful. Right. Well, so, he, he's so not actually, yeah. he's not actually the main character of the film, he's of not. either film. He's sort of a, a the hardest working supporting character, I mm -hmm. would say. Um, yeah. I, I'm wondering if there are specific jokes, not to spoil anything too much, but are there specific visual gags or jokes that you wish could have made it to the final edit? You know, like things that, things that you wrote into the script that sadly got lost, goofy, goofy stuff. I, you know, it's funny. I, I, I'm sure there are, and I can't remember any at the moment. <laughs> well, there's a lot. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, and I and and what and what you know, it, it, we're we're really sort of thrilled with how the movie, you know, how the movie turned out, and and um, you know, we we haven't you know destroyed people's childhood memories. That that was always the big fear. <laughs> That's a good thing. Hey, what I wonder, because how much of this must have felt like this grand reunion, right? Of bringing back so many people who had obviously worked on the original, like what, what it was like on the set. Well, we, we weren't on the set because unfortunately it was during the writer's strike, so we couldn't oh. go. So which, which by the way, sucked. That's a bummer. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wow. That's, that sucked. Wow. Um, but um, I think it was, you know, certainly for, for Michael and Winona and Catherine and Tim, I think it was, it was like a family reunion. And, you know, having having spoken to all of them, obviously, after, you know, the shooting and during this whole process leading up to it, I mean, they, they you know, could not be nicer, could not be more thrilled. Their genuine, genuine love and affection for each other is is really, you know, evident. And I think for Tim, from what all accounts we heard is he he loved just being on set and making the movie. So and, I, and again, I think the director's especially with Tim, but in the, that, that sort of director's DNA and his, his love of the, what he's doing is, is, and his passion for it. I think it gets on the film somehow, not that there's film anymore, but you know what I mean? Speaking of Winona Ryder, my big question about the movie is Lydia Dietz and the few knocks yes. I've heard on the movie is for people who, you know, like me love the original and thought, Oh no, she's a disaster. She's not that confident, stylish, fabulous, fearless kid that she was. And me personally, I loved that. She's a basket case. She, I'm not ruining anything too much. She's a basket case. <laughs> right. She starts the movie popping pills. Her life is a mess. Um, I'd like you to right. speak about that. Why was it important for you to have Lydia be uh, so hobbled? Well, we, you know, part of it is we looked at her. It's like, and, and you're right. Like she, she's this, and it's the Winona we all remember from our, from our youth. Yeah. And but but I think it's it's you know it's thirty six years and we're like how would a person who sees ghosts every day how would they be thirty six <laughs> years on like that's yeah. got to drive you crazy and it makes you so when we meet her you know she isn't in a great place she's obviously you know monetizing her her ability she's in a she's in a terrible codependent relationship which everyone around her can see mm -hmm. and you know she's kind of lost that spark. Right. You know, that that we saw. And then I and then she has this not great relationship with her daughter. And then I think through the course of the movie, you start to see her regain that confidence and find herself again. Right. So I, I think I think for us, it was like, yeah, yeah let's like life hasn't been great. It's, it's been hard for her. Al, and, I, and I think for us, it was just interesting. Al, yeah. Real quick, 10 seconds. Is there going to be a Beetlejuice three? Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> you, you can't say his name three times. So you know what happened. Know. Uh, that, that is all in the hands of Tim Burton. So I, I, have okay. no, I, have, <laughs> I can't speak to that. Well, let's hope. <laughs> Listen, this was so much fun. Congratulations uh, and have a great weekend. So appreciate it. Al Goff, screenwriter of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and of course our own Mark Lydorf, Bloomberg Business Week film reviewer. So appreciate it. Thank you so much. And just got to say shout out to our team. You guys know who you are. You're incredible. Thank you so much. Have a good weekend. This is the Bloomberg Business Week podcast. Available on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Listen live weekday afternoons from 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern on Bloomberg.com, the iHeartRadio app, TuneIn, and the Bloomberg Business app. You can also watch us live every weekday on YouTube and always on the Bloomberg Terminal.